Hello everyone, I'm RecB5. And I am Sandman99. And welcome back to Fallout 4 G9-13 playthrough. Yes, and off camera, I actually went back to the Commonwealth and did a bit of touring around and I did, you know, rescued a couple of settlements from attacks and I established a uh, supply line, actually a couple of supply lines, they don't both show up here, but... Uh, going back to the Commonwealth, one from uh, Coastal Cottage and one from Kingsport Lighthouse. So uh, that way I've got, you know, like the, the access to the resources that I have accumulated in my other settlements in the Commonwealth. And you'll be well supplied too, very unlikely to have this interrupted. Yeah, and I also uh, finished off the scrapping that the scrap robot did not get. Nice. And uh, most things in here can be scrapped. For example, there was a lot of uh, um, trees and shrubs and bushes and and uh, a ruined wooden kind of uh, walkway or something that went out this way. Yep. I was able to scrap the whole thing, plus a whole bunch of rock formations and that kind of stuff. So actually this island before was pretty overgrown and had a lot of vegetation and trees you can see the Keep path that goes out toward the land bridge someday. there right yep and uh it's uh you know like pretty much if it wasn't foggy here you'd be able to see all the way to the uh mainland, other side like yep. to, to the shore of the main island right yep from here now because i basically scrapped all of the obstructions to, to view in here and uh of course, I uh, did a little cooking this morning, first thing, because it's breakfast time. And uh, it just so happened I cooked a little iguana on a stick, so I guess that's what we're going to have. Always got to have more of that. Yep. So anyway, if you have a look here, because I have uh, scrap everything, you know, like there were lots of rock formations and things like that around here that I was able to scrap, and it's kind of smooths up the path down to the shore. There's basically no trees left standing. Because yep. I was able to scrap all of them. And uh, so I've got a fairly big flat area here. And I sort of built a little addition onto the old ruined kind of barn thing here. Just like so. By kind of fudging a couple of, uh, you know, floor blocks in close up to the to the edge of the building here. And then adding a few uh, barn walls and stuff like that. Because this way now I've got enough room for some more workbench type stations in here. So this will be kind of like the workshop, I guess. And, uh... Whiskey's running low. Better find some more and soon... <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking that I was going to make this more or less like a smallish uh, walled compound on this island. Because it just doesn't seem like there's much point in trying to, uh, you know, like, develop this entire place, right? Yep. There's way more space here than even the number of settlers that I could get with my charisma will ever be able to uh, occupy. Well, and I suppose you don't even know where the attack points and spawn points are going to be anyways, right? No, I'm not really terribly familiar with this because, uh, you know, like I may have mentioned to one of our viewers in a post earlier, possibly, it's been several years since I've actually played Far Harbor. So I don't really remember very much about it anymore. Like, like I can kind of the the high points or or uh, you know like the sort of b big things I can remember, but the but the uh, um, you know kind of smaller things I don't really remember those very well anymore. So anyway, we're gonna try and. Uh, you might have to clip a roof piece on there before you can do that. Yeah, maybe. We'll have to do that. We'll just... There. Don't really need one there, but that's okay. We'll need one just so that we can start doing the, uh, the fencing thing. Because what I can do is I can snap a wall piece there. And then we can start putting some uh, fence pieces on. I'm not sure exactly. It looks like it's pretty hilly and rough back here. So maybe I'll... Uh, Use that as farming space? I kinda, well, I kind of thought that I would head down toward the coast there. You know? And kind of cut that area off. So we'll we'll just go from there and see where this goes. Start off with uh, a little bit of junk fencing. 
or at least a piece of junk fencing because I can kind of snap it onto the, you know, like that, kind of, sort of. Yep. And then I can snap another piece on there, and then I can pull that one down a little, and I can pull this one down a little. And by the way, these are mod-added uh, snap points too, right? Yep, yep. You know, like uh, somebody... Well, it'll be in the... Uh, like, the mod for this, I believe, will be in the uh, uh, mod list that we provided. In the, oh, right, in, yep, in the, yep. In the, in the community section, right? Yep. Anyway, now I'm going to store that, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can use wire fence, because the chain link fence is actually far more economical material-wise, right? Like, I can build 982 pieces of fencing here, right? I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to have to do something like this. I'm going to have to... Uh, there's also little tricks that you can learn for doing this kind of fence. Like that? Too, right. And uh, I'm going to try this first. No. No, oh, that might work. Well, what I can do now, though, is I can store this piece of junk fence. And I can put a sloping piece here. Right? And I can move this piece over here. And then I'll move uh, this sloping piece over here. Then I can see that. Yep. So what that does is it more or less gives me a piece of, uh, you know, like chain link fence that nicely fits up tight to the building. And then, of course, this piece here will have to be pulled out and we'll put this piece there again. And then, uh, by the looks of it, because this is kind of up and down, we'll have to use some angled up and down pieces to kind of... Uh, follow the lay of the land. Follow the lay of the land, exactly. And that's why I really like the chain link fence, too. That's, which is also, uh, I believe, listed in our mod list. Um, you can do a lot of this kind of stuff with it. It's really a nuisance, especially in some uh, up and down uh, elevation areas where there's a lot of really uh, severe changes in elevation. Like to try this settlement. And, to try and build something coherent, right? Yep. But the, these fence things here actually allow you to build something that is can be very, very steeply angled, right? Although that's pretty much as far as I can go with that fence, but I think that's probably okay there. Right. Yep. For all I know, there could be a spawn point for settlement attacks, like right here, anyway. So I really, uh, you know, don't know. So anyway, now that we've got a starting point for that fence, there we can go uh, in the opposite direction too. And uh, you know, like I guess I can probably uh, store that wall because I may use it for building something later. And we can use this piece. Right? To uh, get ourselves a somewhat level looking fence like this. Then we can store that because we don't need it again right now. And we'll grab that piece and put it over here somewhere because we're going to need an angled piece. Maybe we'll need that other piece I just stored. No, it's a bit too steep. So anyway, as you can see, building with the chain link fence is really, really nice. I highly recommend this mod to anybody that likes to, uh, you know, do settlement building. Yeah, they're really quite versatile. Yeah, and also pretty economical, like I said, from a from a uh, um, materials materials point of, view. point of view. It's actually quite economical to make fences out of this stuff, right? And I don't know if I'll go right down to the water on that side. Um, probably what I'll do is I'll maybe put in a corner piece here. And you can see that the corner piece kind of sticks up a little bit, but there's a little trick that you can use to fix that too. Okay, so we'll go here. And then we'll go... Uh, 
like this. Okay, maybe not. Uh, we'll go like that. And then we'll take this corner piece and take it out of there. Maybe we'll put one of these in. It uh, kind of angles downward a little bit, but we'll... Okay, maybe we can get away with a straight piece. Looks like. Or maybe that other piece, but just less, you know, like upward, but less less severe, right? Oh. Okay. Maybe one so, less. I think one less would, would uh, there work. There we go. And then we can store that piece, because now what we can do is we can just snap another fence piece onto this one, like that. And we can snap to this piece here, make a corner. Oh, right. that's smooth. Well, that way you don't end up having to either have a really, really low corner section. Yep. Or you don't end up with a big gap underneath your fence, right? It's a little bit of a trick, and you got to fiddle around with it a bit, but it's still, it's not bad. It gives you a more uh, tailored corner piece. Yeah. So, anyway... Um, Let's see here. I guess we can continue with this piece. And maybe I'll get on the other side so I can see a little bit better here. All right. And we'll probably need that really steep piece. Or maybe we'll have to put in a another corner here because it looks like we have a pretty severe change in... Uh, Although that might not be the steepest piece either, right? There. Let's see how this one looks. Yeah, even that isn't enough. So what we'll do is we'll make that a little bit shorter. And we'll uh, do the corner thing over here. Again. And this time, it looks like it's okay on the corner there. We don't really need to do the little trick, right? Yeah, it looks like it fits in just fine. Yeah. So we can... Uh, okay, maybe we'll use a straight piece there. But anyway, as you can see, it's very, very uh, nice to build stuff with when uh, you have the ability to change elevations without having to do a whole bunch of awkward... Uh, tricks because this guy that made this mod made all sorts of different varieties of of different uh, sloped fences, right? Yep. And actually, you know what? I think I just might do a uh, corner back out here again, right? And then uh, uh, is that one in the ground? It looks like, looks like it, it is. Yep. Because they do, you know, like the posts do stick down below the mesh a little bit. Yep. Yeah. So then we'll need one of these pieces here. Probably, probably this one. Well, or maybe not. We might have to do. We'll, we'll do the. We'll do the trick thing here a little bit. Uh, yeah, there. Then we'll move this guy over here. Okay. Yeah, we can still use this one here. Because then what we can do is we can spin this one around. Or take it out and put a shallower one in. Actually, we can probably put this straight piece in there. Yep. Yeah. And we just got to get it to snap to the right piece. Got to spin it. In. Oh, well, there you there. go. There. So... There's a bit of a change in elevation on the fence there, but it's not too severe, right? Yeah, it's just one level. Yeah. Okay, we'll save that piece for later when we need it. Oh, we got to take a water break. Because I just got told that I am parched. See, I'm just going to imagine that's like a, a Diet Pepsi or a Coke Zero fountain. <laughs> that would be a miracle. Okay, so we'll go out a couple more fence lengths here, and then we'll, uh, we'll turn and we'll head back toward the coast over there. 
minutes. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that coast area there to put in a big water purifier. And then... Uh, Yeah, okay. This should be more farming area than I'll ever need anyway. Yeah, probably. You'll be able to build structures in here, like overland conveyors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, eh? Okay, well. Yeah. That one too high? Yeah, that one's a bit too high. Okay. Oh. I don't think you quite did clicked I, that did one. Did I miss? Okay, yeah, I missed. There. It looks like these things have some angles uh, on their snap points, too. Yeah, occasionally you can. You can get an angle on the snap point. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little trick. I'm just going to bridge across this at this level. Just to uh, connect these together. Okay, like that. Because what I'm going to do here... Put that one over there for now. Going to stuff a double gate in there or something? No, I'm just going to put... I'm just not even going to bother with a gate. I'm just going to put a, uh, a shorter fence length here. And then uh, we'll just have an opening here, right? Yeah, where that this, works. Where this path is. Yeah, and then you could load because it up when with I, when, Yeah, when I build the defenses for this place, I'll probably put scaffolding along the inside of this fence and then put gun turrets on top. Yep. Right? On top of the scaffold. And also, uh, another thing about doing this, too, is that, I mean, every settlement has a limited build area. And uh, if you put try and put do too much with places like this, you might have a lot of space. But um, you also have to keep in mind that you'll run out of build area in the workbench pretty quickly if you try and occupy all of that space. Yep. Very, very easy, right down to the beach here, right? Yep. And then we got uh, places where we can put water purifiers right next to this ruined ship. Probably this spot here would be a good place to put them, actually. Pretty good depth. Yep. And then uh, I guess we could maybe put a small secondary gate or something in here just to get out to the back of the property, kind of. Yeah, and then you could use the back for whatever you want to. Yeah. But for now, I think we're just going to go with this. Because it gives us lots of farming space. It gives us room to uh, build some buildings. In fact, that could be a little trick that I could do, too. Maybe as we'll just, just see if we can do this. We'll go with a barn... Uh, okay, I know what I can do. Okay, let's store this security fence for the time being, and we'll bring out one of our, uh, junk fences again. Our junk fence section. As soon as we get to it. Okay, there we go. Now, what we can do is go back to our barn floor tile and look at that. I can snap this foundation piece right to the back of that junk fence piece. And we'll store that. And we can use this uh, kind of um, and I mean I'm kind of making this up as I go along. I probably could have done this a little more efficiently but uh, that's okay. Laying in a building, or...? Yeah. It's 
So then we can do something like this. Good old shack step time. Nope, that doesn't quite want to fit on there either. That's okay, maybe I don't need it. Yeah, yep, I don't it's need walkable. it. I can just walk in or in and out. So we don't need that. So now we can actually scrap some of this and get some of the steel back because this building will fill the space otherwise occupied by that fence. And then you can just use uh, those uh, stairs in order to get up there. Yep, there we go. See? Just like that. And this is a fairly big building, so we uh, probably will be able to build pretty well all the beds that we're ever going to need inside this building. And then you can throw gun turrets on top. Yeah, and then I can throw gun turrets on top. I like building with the barn pieces, actually. Um, they have, uh, you know, like nice solid walls. They use nothing but wood, most of the pieces. Yep. And wood tends to be one of the uh, most plentiful and cheapest uh, building materials. See, now we could even do something if we wanted to get fancy here and uh, use up our junk fences a little bit that we had. Uh, it was this one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, pull that wall off again for a second. Sometimes these things are funny, you know, like they don't want to snap if there's a Grab that one and we'll put it out here. Okay. And maybe we'll move this over here for a second. We'll put this here. There. Okay, that's walkable. And now you've got yourself a whole other section to develop. See, it's a little bit harder with the junk fences because they don't have the nice uh, angled pieces. Yep. So you have to play around with them a little bit here and you end up with some kind of uneven looking fence type things but that's okay now we have an access out here that uh to this side that doesn't completely lead directly into a building <clears throat> and then we'll go over here i think what i'm going to do I don't think I need to really occupy this entire uh, upper space. Yeah, this could just be your area. Yeah. Well, or additional bed area, but uh, uh, I don't need to make it completely the same size as the lower level, right? Yep. I don't even know how high the build level, the build limit is in this settlement. I know in the Commonwealth, some of them, you can build as high as like 20 stories high. Yep. But, uh... You'd never need it all. You'd never need it all. And especially here, you don't, you just don't need that much space, right?
But now we can go out here and we have enough room to actually put... There. And that saves us a little bit of uh, space inside the building as well. And then that gives us room to do things like put, uh, you know, like gun turrets and that kind of stuff out here. Wonder what level of power. Mark 7. Okay. You see that? I don't know what governs what Mark... Like, there's Mark 1, Mark 3, I think, Mark 5, and Mark 7 for machine gun turrets. Yep, yep. And I was doing some reading on it, but uh, they don't explain it in the wiki, and no one who is online really seems to know either uh, what determines what uh, level of machine gun turret you're going to build. But it does seem to have something to do with how far away from uh, Sanctuary Hills you are, too. Oh, because, really? Yeah, because at Sanctuary Hills, I can only seem to be able to put Mark I gun turrets in. Whereas here, or even further away places in the Commonwealth, I seem to be able to put, like, Mark Seven or Mark V, or Mark Three or whatever, right? How strange. Yeah, it is. It's weird. I don't know what determines that. But anyway, up here is a good place to put some gun turrets to get our defenses up on the settlement a little. And then we can put our power up here, too. And, of course, I don't have enough aluminum because there isn't enough aluminum in the world, right? I buy shipments of aluminum, I scavenge, and I grab all the aluminum tin cans and, and uh, TV dinner plates and things that I can find. Not enough airplanes just, laying around. Yeah, there's just not enough aluminum, so I guess we're going to have to build medium generators out here. Whoa. Well, I love oil and gas. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, like, uh, it would be really handy if I had the materials to build a nuclear reactor. Yeah, you'd save but, a lot of space. But, uh, yeah, exactly. But, you know what? I guess that it is what it is. So then we'll put our... Uh... There we go. Put that up here. Because we need to get some settlers going here, right? And uh, maybe we'll put, since we can build a couple more of these things, we'll put a few more of these up here, too. Just like this. And then maybe I got room for one more. Yeah. And that ought to do us just fine for oh, the time wait. being. Oh, wait. Did you connect uh, those two? Uh, yeah. There we go. And the other two on the other side? Yeah, the reason I do this is so that if one generator gets knocked out, then at least the other ones are still all connected to each other and connected to the things that I want power for, right? Yep. <coughs> you could maybe even sneak in a terminal here somewhere. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. See, it's not that I particularly need power for the for a, for a building that's going to have nothing but beds in it anyway, right? But it's nice to have power in your workshop and stuff like that, right? Yo, because then you can hang lights and things like that. Yep. Radios and the other kind of things like that. And I think this place is going to start off just a little bit uh, rough. You know, at least until uh, I've gotten a few settlers here. And it looks like now we can start building some beds. We've got some settlers. That was quick. And in a big area like this, we should be able to build quite a lot of beds. Right? 
And people who've looked at some of the settlements that we have here will have noticed that I like to build these. I guess if you're uh, really cheap and you uh, want to save on space and on uh, uh, materials, you could just throw sleeping bags down. But I just think that it's... Yeah, they get proper barrack-style beds here. Yeah, that's right. And if you pack these in the right way, well, you can put in quite a lot of beds in a small area. Just got to make sure you can walk between the rows here. Because I read that a settler has to be able to access a bed from at least one side. Yep. In order for it to count as a, uh, as a proper assigned bed, right? Which is why in the middle rows, I'll put two of them side by side like this, right? It just lets you put a few more beds into the, the like a few extra beds into the same area. Now, I've already got 26 beds here. I think I probably won't need any more uh, bed space than what I've already got down here, right? We'll have to leave. Well, maybe we won't have to leave one open. We'll just see. Yeah, if we can still get by there to get to that one. Looks like it. We'll tighten this row up a little bit. Of course, I'm not really very OCD about this kind of stuff. I'm not really too worried about having every bed square with the next one and that kind of thing. So I apologize to any of you OCD people out there who might not like it, or RecV5 actually, <laughs> who, 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 doesn't, who doesn't even like it if I don't align all of the floor tiles in the same direction. That's right, because right, I'm actually OCD. <laughs> it drives them crazy. Sometimes I will do that on purpose, just to drive you nuts. Because uh. it's fun. But anyway, we got... How many beds we got? 38? Okay. You know what? I think we could probably hit 40 here pretty easily. And then, yeah, the upstairs part can be just my quarters. My luxury uh, apartment. Ha! Right? Yeah. Yeah, you could put, throw all your workbenches in here and everything. I could. I can even uh, maybe... Uh, put an interior wall in here too, right? There. But that door's facing the wrong way. It's okay. It's it'll not be, okay. It'll be fine. Just don't worry about ah. it. <laughs> there, that's my bed. And I have a... Uh, it, it's also listed in the mod list, I believe. I think it's called This Is My Bed. And this bed doesn't count as a settlement bed, and settlers will not sleep in this bed, right? So you don't have to come in here in the middle of the night and kick a settler out of your bed before you can sleep. Yep. Which can happen sometimes, right? Yep. Anyway, yeah, I've got a nice big spot here to put in a living room, or actually maybe I could even put shops in here in this space, right? Yeah, now you just got to put in some water and some food. Yeah, now we need to put some crops in and some water, and then at least these guys will have something to start Damn with. Fog got my lungs again. Yeah. So yeah. maybe what we'll do... Must be the, the mainlander, that's right, I am. I'm the mainlander. How's it going? Hey. I'm yeah, you are. You are new here. Okay, uh, let's see here. Do I have anything to give these guys? Uh, doesn't really look like I'm carrying anything extra. So, I guess it must be getting close to nighttime again. Yeah, it's 7.25 p.m. But anyway, let's see what kind of water purifier we can put out here. Because we may as well take care of that little chore next. Yeah, we can put an industrial water purifier out. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, that will take care of all our water needs. And then I guess we'll put some pylons out here too. Okay. 
So I could put these further apart since I have place everywhere. But what I do is I just get them because like, I don't really want the wires draping down to the ground kind yeah. of thing. So you can see that it's bright green right now. Yep. And as soon as it goes dark green, you're and as soon range. as it goes like a dimmer green, well, that's you know, in vanilla. That's where it would turn red. Yep. Right. So it, when it turns dimmer green, I can still put it there if I want to. Right. Yep. But if I put it at the uh, this way, I can get the most out of the distance and still uh, not have hilarious looking power lines. Yeah. Not have power lines on the ground kind of thing. Right. Hey, they're just who said they weren't jump ropes. <laughs> and we'll put in a street light here, maybe, as well. And okay. remember, F5 is your friend. That's right, F5 is my friend. But I think it's time to do a quick save here. Because uh, you never know when the game might crash or something silly like that might happen. Which is why you have to have a mod that allows you to quick save at will in uh, survival. Too many nights out sleeping in the fog. Now, uh, what else do I have to eat here? Maybe we'll start at the top. Work our way down. We got bubble gum. Crispy squirrel bits. Ah, okay. oh, that's we'll, a balanced diet we'll, right we'll there. We'll eat those, yeah. The it's the carnivore like diet. We're on the Atkins diet here. We don't eat vegetables. <laughs> Just the kind of diet I like. <laughs> so anyway, okay, we got our water in, uh, and then we got this nice big open space here to plant crops, right? Yep. So we'll uh, plant some carrots. Oh, God. Not carrots. And then maybe we'll plant some corn. Good, because nobody's going to eat the carrots. No. The carrots go on the workbench and the potatoes come out. Yeah. Okay, so now we need to uh, maybe put in a uh, uh, terminal here so we can control things here too. See, I could put in all these video games if I wanted to. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, we'll put in a vault tech management because I need aluminum for it and I don't have a whole lot, so I better build it now while I've still got aluminum to build it with. Right. And then I guess somewhere along the way we're going to have to come across an aluminum mine or something. Mm. Okay, and then of course because I have place everywhere, I don't need a wall one of those big awkward wall pass through pieces in the conduit set. Yeah, you can, I just, can just jam this. Too. I can just put this right through the wall, right? Which is really what the Bethesda should have done instead of making those weird... I don't know why they made those weird, awkward uh, pass-through pieces when they could have just made these things so that you could just stick them right through a wall. Especially with how big they are, right? Yeah. So now we can access our terminal... And we've got two unemployed people that we can assign to farming, both of them. <sighs> so now we should have uh, 12 food, and we've got 40 beds, and we've got 40 water. And we got a little bit light on the defense, but here's what I had mentioned earlier. Is we'll put a little bit of scaffolding in here, like this. Then we just put a floor in, a floor piece. Throw a gun turret and on top. And then throw a gun turret on top. Just like that. Maybe we'll uh, start off with one on each side kind of thing. I don't use the uh, powered gun turrets a lot, at least unless I've got uh, readily available power. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that missile turrets, while they're wonderful for destroying baddies, also tend to destroy your crops and your settlers and 
if you happen to be in the line of fire, they'll also destroy you. Yep, yep. <laughs> you ever gotten killed by your oh, own yeah, missile turrets? Oh yeah, I've been friendly fire killed by my own missile turrets before. So yeah, you you have to be mindful of that kind of thing. Uh, heavy laser turrets are pretty good. I uh, I will use those. I did some reading on turrets, and I, to be honest with you, unless there's some kind of intangible or un uh, documented thing that shotgun turrets do. I don't really see what the purpose of shotgun turrets are. You might as well just have machine gun turrets, right? Oh, maybe it's the kind of thing where if you were to like build like a, a loop, looping switchback tunnel type system and then throw shotgun turrets inside it. Yeah, I suppose maybe, but uh, like I read a, a little bit of an online article that a guy wrote about what he his take on turrets was and his in his opinion, uh, it is be you get the best bang for your buck with the least friendly fire destruction by building a combination of machine gun turrets and heavy lasers. Yep. Right. And, uh, you know, like he said, while missile turrets will, will eliminate enemies in a big hurry, they also damage your own stuff quite a bit too. Yep. So anyway, we've got ourselves a settlement started now. It's established. We've got a couple of settlers here to do some farming. And uh, we got some gun turrets up to protect the place. We could put a couple more up here, actually. More so my back or my feet. Right, we could put another one. Uh, and I don't know if I have. Yeah, like again, you need aluminum to make heavy laser turrets too. Whereas the stuff that you need to make machine gun turrets is common materials that are yep. easy to find, right? So, you know, again, it's just it's just more economical to uh, to use machine gun turrets. So anyway, for the, I guess that's probably okay to start with. So maybe what we'll do is we'll uh, go crash on uh, old Longfellow's couch again here, and then come daytime we'll have to decide what we're going to do. Alrighty. So there you go. A little bit of building for the uh, building enthusiasts. Yep. There. Well, you know, you gotta have your happy little settlements out there. That's right. And I didn't do very much scrapping. Like, basically, the scrap bot picked up a lot of the garbage and debris in here. I didn't do a lot of the uh, scrapping of manual stuff in here. Although it looks like if I was desperate, I might be able to get some aluminum, like for that aluminum can. But I left this stuff alone largely just because it's kind of uh, decorative, right? Yep. You know? Because, like, th this is basically a cabin just like at Sunshine Tidings, but it's got lots of uh, interesting clutter and stuff in it, whereas the Sunshine Tiding cabinets are kind of plain inside, right? Anyway, here we go. We've got our little fenced-off area. We've got... Lots and lots of farming. I would say we could probably easily produce 42 crops here, like 42 value of crops, which is probably more than I'll ever need, because I don't think I've ever had a settlement that reached 40 people. Yep. Right, ever. And we've got 40 water, which is probably all we'll ever need. We've got uh, a fenced off area so that hopefully most of the bad guys will be fenced out. And we've got uh, defenses up. And probably later on what I'll do is I'll develop more gun turret type defenses along this fence line. But for the time being, I think we're doing pretty good here. So, oh, we've got to go back and have a drink of water out of the fountain first before we go anywhere, <laughs> though. And if we go away and do a little adventuring here and there, by the time we come back, we'll probably have a few more settlers. And a little bit more stuff to do. And a little bit more stuff to do. But we got all the basics covered now. So we should see what we're going to do now. Um, I think we're looking for... Yeah, we're looking for that guy. We're looking for the missing synth. That's or that guy. That's what we're going to do. We're going to look for the missing synth, I think. That's what we're going to do. That seems like a good one to start with. And remember, F5 is your friend. Yes, it is. And it is good to be reminded of that. Yeah, especially now that you're all done your settlement building. 
socks that don't have holes in them. Okay, well, I guess we'll just plunge right into town here. Maybe we'll uh, approach this with a little bit of caution, though. Ooh, what's this? Just an empty garage? Looks like it. Okay, can't go in that house. That's one thing I wish they could have done. Maybe it was for practical reasons that they didn't. But it would have been pretty good if you could have gone into all of these houses and poked around, right? Yeah. You know, instead of just having them as boarded off uh, features, kind of. Looks like there's a church building here or something, too. Church. <clears throat> Where's the road? Man, oh man. Buried under all this crap and all blowed up and... Yeah, really. There's like piles of stuff everywhere. Well, there's some shotgun shells for you. Yep. Well, we'll pick up the uh, pipe guns too, because the pipe guns, you can, if you have uh, good enough scrapping perks, you can actually get copper and stuff like that from scrapping the pipe guns, right? So I've got two two ranks of scrapper there, which means that most weapons that I pick up now, I'll be able to get all kinds of useful things out of them, like springs and gears and copper and other stuff like that, right? Okay, well, we're going to try and find a way through this mess. <coughs> Closer. Oh yeah, right, that other guy is in this... Okay, dead ghoul. That other guy that's missing is in this general direction too, I think. Because wasn't he sent to uh, fix the the water generator, the generators that run the water supply or something? I do believe so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Fog condensers. Yeah. This bus. Okay. Oh, look, there's a red rocket settlement. This is part of that same red rocket settlement mod that I run that adds all of the red rockets in uh, the Commonwealth as settlements. And there are also some red rockets in Far Harbor, which are uh, settlements as well. Nice. So I guess what I'll do is I'll activate the workbench and I'll scrap a couple of things because when we go back to... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I, ran, I can't reload fast enough. This weapon is actually extremely powerful. It's one that I discovered uh, up on the wall at Sanctuary Hills, actually. Oh, yeah. I'd found it quite some time ago, but I more or less ignored it until I read an article that talked about what you could do with a laser weapon that had the wounding effect, right? So this is a legendary laser weapon that has the wounding effect. But you got and, a beam splitter on it. And the guy that wrote the article said, turn it into an automatic weapon and then put a beam splitter on it. Because then you basically have a rapid fire shotgun with the bleed effect on every single laser beam that gets fired. <laughs> So, as you can see, the fire rate on this is, is 104, which means that it fires 10 shots per, per second. Yep. 
and each shot has eight beams. So you're firing 80 beams per second, basically. Oh my God. And with the bleed effect, uh, I believe that wounding causes five points of bleed damage per second for five seconds. So if you're firing 80 beams per second, and each of those beams does five points of bleed damage, then you're doing 400 points of bleed damage per second for five seconds. <laughs> on top of your regular damage. On top of your regular damage. So this is an incredibly destructive weapon, right? At, at close ranges. And of course, uh, this weapon is also affected by our uh, shotgun uh, spread correction mod so that you actually get a pretty tight grouping when you fire this weapon, right? Yeah, so that actually makes a little bit more sense, like kind of like a more realistic shotgun. Yeah, exactly. Because before, I mean, at, at the range of where that car is... Well, it would fill the whole car. And it was, so. Yeah, and I would probably miss with half of the beams, right? But now... Right, and you also have to take into account that the recoil on this thing is crazy. Yeah. Like for a, for a uh, laser weapon... Like, you can't, you can only fire extremely short bursts with it anyway. And that's going to be partly because of the uh, shotgun. Yeah, because if you if you try and f fire a sustained burst before you know it, you're aiming this this way, right? Yeah. Like, you might have noticed even with those short bursts, the barrel was going upward at quite a, a rapid uh, pace, right? No yep. such thing as junk, as far as I'm concerned. Everything's got a use. Yeah. Except for when you're collecting antiques, apparently. Well, no, uh, Longfellow actually seems to like it if you uh, scrap and scrounge and that kind of thing. Some some companions don't, but he seems to, you know, he always seems to have something good to say whenever you do stuff like that. Okay, well, we're getting, uh, oh, oh, I see a quest marker. So anyway, I figured I'd try this gun out a little bit after uh, putting all of the... Hmm. There's a trail of blood. Okay, guess we gotta follow the trail of blood. The blood trail. Mmm, canned dog food. Yeah. Well, I don't really need to pick that stuff up, to tell you the truth, because I've got so much food on me that I'm carrying around already. I'll never eat it all, probably. And it'll never spoil... Yep. The greener it gets, the more it adds flavor, right? That's right. Oop. Okay, so we need to follow the blood trail. Okay. There's some more blood. Well, whatever happened to this guy, he sure managed to go a long ways after he started to bleed out. <clears throat> You'd think he would have run out by now. Especially at the rate which he's bleeding. Yeah. Investigate the house. Okay. Who are you guys? Rapper. Hey there. Fresh meat crawling in from the fog. Don't care if it's my lurk or man. Huh. I'm not looking for trouble. I just need to find someone, a young man with white hair. You help me, I'll leave. Yeah. We found him. One of the fox creatures already attacked him. He was bleeding out, but you know, why waste the meat? Here. Well, what's left? <laughs> 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 Thanks. Oh god. <laughs> Don't come back. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess now we know what happened to him. I don't think I really want that, though. Uh, I think I'd rather eat some grilled brad roach and... Uh, Ditch maybe, the meat? Maybe a little bit of bumblegum. Yeah, what did I have there anyway? Did he actually give me something? I have no idea. I don't see anything.
What do you think? Should I just shoot these guys? They are cannibals. Wow. This thing clears a room in a hurry, doesn't it? Yep. Even though I felt like I was barely in control of it because of the recoil, eh? Well, all you gotta do is hit them a couple times, right? And then the uh, scatter and the bleed builds up. Yep. Well, they won't be eating... Oh, look. They won't be eating any more uh, helpless since, that's for sure. The only drawback to these Institute weapons is they're so big and clunky, like when you even go into first person like this, it blocks half of your view, right? Yep. It's the biggest and clunkiest weapons in the game, I think. And you would have thought that, uh, like, to tell you the truth, since the Institute was supposed to be the most scientifically advanced faction in the Commonwealth, I kind of expected their weapons to be a little bit more slimline and high-tech. And also better than the standard lasers, right? Well, that's why we made that mod to boost the damage slightly. Yeah, to make uh, Institute lasers more effective weapons than, uh, than the standard lasers, because... It kind of goes against logic to think that the uh, most scientifically advanced and best equipped uh, laboratories in the Commonwealth can't make a decent laser weapon, but some guy putting together a bunch of wires and crap out in the middle of the, the wilderness can make a better laser gun, right? Like, it just didn't seem to make sense to me. Yeah, well, you know, you take a couple of twigs and a rock and, you know, <laughs> maybe some mud here and there and you, you make a laser weapon out of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, what are we going to do here? We're going to... We're working on Gunslinger, so we'll keep working on that. You're getting there. I'm getting there, yeah. Well, let's see how our uh, our handguns are doing now. Uh, we got our two-shot Ruger Mark V, which does pretty good damage now. And uh, what else have we got here? We got... Uh... Another Ruger Mark V. That one doesn't do quite as good because it's not a two-shot. Yep. Right? And uh, it has the meticulously tuned receiver with a flame thing on it. And then what else have we got? We got our Deadeye Advanced Juger Pistol. Okay. I think in order to be really effective, you need your guns to do, uh, you know, like up to about 100 points of damage per shot. Well, you're starting thing. to get there with that Ruger anyways. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know what? While we're here... You can search uh, for the other guy. search for the other guy because we have to go all the way back to the uh, the synth place there in order to complete this one, but we're almost here there, right, I think. See? I told you missing means dead. Yeah. Search for Howard Dunbar, and it's like right there, so it's on, a, on the way back anyways, right? But yeah, I decided to try out this weapon because that uh, other kind of cold weapon, I was starting to run out of ammunition for it, and I didn't really have a way to get any more. So basically, I put that up on the wall in Sanctuary and got this thing down instead, right? Yep. It's not quite as much fun. Like, the uh, target lock thing was kind of cool, and I thought that was pretty good. But, uh, you know, it's ammo still... Ammo was getting scarce. Yeah, ammo, ammunition was just getting scarce for it, so... <clears throat> What's this building? Uh-oh. It's a ghoul building. Oh, miss me. Time to stop for a drink, yeah? Well, this thing tears through ghouls pretty well. Yep, I imagine it'll tear through just about anything you shoot it with pretty well. Yeah, even that legendary ghoul reaver. Yeah, you're probably going to find that there's just about nothing you can't tear through with that thing. 
interesting. Sometimes you can find good stuff in these buses, eh? Nice. But ghouls you like to sleep me. in these buses too. Yep. Okay, well we're still not to where Howard Dunbar, whoever he is, disappeared, so I guess we need to keep going this way a bit. Uh oh. Talk about stopping power. Yeah, rapid pipe submachine gun. Yeah, this thing is, has a fair amount of stopping power, that's for sure. <clears throat> I might have to ease up on it a bit, though, because it seems to eat up ammunition in a pretty big hurry, too. Oh, here we go. Oh. Well, it works pretty good on Meyer Lurks, too. Looks like Howard didn't make it. Missing means dead. I'll have to repair the fog condensers myself. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll grab the fog condenser components. We'll take his caps, because he isn't, doesn't need them anymore. Now, what do we... Good thing you've been magically working on your repair skill this whole time. Yeah. I guess it's all that settlement building, right? Uh-huh. Well... I guess now, okay, we fixed the fog condenser, so I guess we gotta go this way some more now. Oh, there's another fog condenser to fix. So we repaired all the fog condensers. It looks like this is where their water is. Uh oh. Looks like it. Come on, show yourself. Oh. Two shot bolt action shotgun. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Okay. There you go. That does a lot of damage, just base. Look at that. That's with a standard receiver. Yep. Okay. You know what? We might have to try that out a little bit too. We'll get it on the bench. Must be time to F5 after after that wonderful find. F5 is your friend. Yes. You got all kinds of interesting weapons to try out now. Yeah, I know. I've got so many, I just don't know what to do with them all. <coughs> But anyway, I guess uh, we got to go back to town now and talk to Captain Avery, hey? He's Dude. dead, Jim. Yep. Maybe we should uh, switch weapons again here. We'll switch back to this thing for a bit. Because we might be running a little low on fusion cells if we keep burning them through them like we are, because this does not seem to be one of those areas where you find a great deal of those kinds of things. And I don't normally play a science-minded character, so I usually prefer uh, ballistic weapons anyway. Well, plus if you uh, played a science-minded character, you wouldn't get the joys of the punt gun. Yeah. <laughs> I may, I may ra like, sideline the punt gun for a while, too. I don't know. Getting a little tired of blowing people <laughs> sky high? I guess, you, you know, you're carrying around enough guns. Something else. Water supply won't last much longer. Those fog condensers are back online. Good. Our water supply was starting to get low. Wasn't sure how much longer we could hold out. Did you find Howard? Uh... Yep, he's Meyerlert food. food. <laughs> well, I said it was pain work. Two hundred caps should be enough. <sighs> yeah, need anything else? 
Anything else I can do to help? Don't know if you've chatted up the Mariner, but she's always looking for help. I know Cassie Dalton was asking around, but... Uh, oh, well. Judge for yourself there. Okay. Well, looks like we can get a couple Thanks. more jobs. Now. Looks like it, yeah. That makes two of us. Maybe we'll now, do... We'll go and we'll talk to those two people. Gotta start making arrangements for Howard. So I'll say goodbye. Yeah, bye. We'll go talk to those two people and get some more jobs. And then, uh... Is there any hint in here? Uh, okay, I think I know where the Mariner is anyway, so I can remember this from the last time around. There you are. The hull took a battering, to be sure. But she wouldn't be standing at all if it weren't for you. They call me the Mariner, shipwright, handyman, and the only one keeping the harbor afloat. Beside Captain Avery. Oh. Pleasure okay. to meet you. Likewise. I hope the island doesn't kill you quick. I think the Mariner is some kind so, of vampire. Probably a Nav Navita I or whatever they're called. Uh, like a, an aquatic. Repairs, I need She's definitely got quite the set of teeth on her there. Yep. And they won't be easy <laughs> to come by. 450 caps if you can, though. Okay, sure. Sign me up. I'll help. Eagle's Cove Tannery. Tools are certain to be there. Now get. Okay, there we go. We got another job. Now we need to go and talk to. An account of eight children of Adam. Not you. You know when I'm feeling down, a little commerce always cheers me up. What the hell is a synth anyway? Oh, You're okay. The mainlander who just got here. Cassie Dalton. Better watch yourself, because this island sees and hears everything you do. I should know. I watched the island tear down the greatest family that ever set foot in Far Harbor. It's a tale of greed, blood, <coughs> and vengeance. Yeah? What family? What family are you talking about? I was just about to explain. My family, the Daltons, was the pride of Far Harbor for generations, even back before the war. It was lumber and fishing that made the Daltons rich, but they got greedy, took too much from the island. The island's been getting revenge ever since. I don't think Killing the island is sentient, to tell you the one. truth. <laughs> I'm the last Dalton still standing. Ah! But now our story takes an unexpected turn. A mysterious stranger comes to Far Harbor. Someone strong. Someone capable. With the stranger's help, the last living Dalton finally has a chance to avenge her bloodline once and for all. Okay. Uh, duh, do you mean Wait. me? Are you saying huh. that I'm the mysterious stranger who's going to help you avenge your family? Ah, well, you got the yes. sunglasses on and everything. <laughs> You'll need your yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if I have a 44 Magnum though. Ah, uh, well. Now on to the first chapter in our tale of vengeance. That would be the sad story of freckle-faced Petey. Petey was my cousin. He was a good lad. Never caused trouble. He thought all those freckles brought him luck, but, <laughs> well, not so much. He was out foraging at the National Park campground when the island sick some feral ghouls on him. Island's a sneaky bastard when it wants to be. Oh, anyway, okay. he made it back to town, but died from his injuries that night. Of course, those ferals are still out there, <laughs> waiting to kill the next poor fool who comes along. Damn shame that. Okay, I'll get Those revenge for you. Good as dead. Good, good. You know what? It just occurred to it's me. National Park time, Campground, I think, is the site of another settlement. Pain. So maybe if we talk to this person every now and then and she gives us a job to go and, you know, that's sort of like the uh, open up the the settlement in Commonwealth Radiant Quest yeah, another, kind of thing. Another settlement needs your help, General. Yeah. So she's a she's obviously a Radiant Quest giver that will help us to uh, open up um, Get them while they're in stock. Uh, 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 you need it? New settlements. New, new settlements, probably. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, well, you know what? In the meantime, I think we'll go back to the island settlement here and see if we've got any new settlers. And uh, then, then we'll uh, call it an episode because I think we must be somewhat over an hour by now. Yeah, we're about 10 minutes past. Yeah, okay. Well, it's just about that time then. So you can see how clear the island is now compared to what it was before I scrapped it, right? Yep. I'm afraid we may be in some trouble here. Oh, okay. We're getting <laughs> a lot of condensers are broken. This place is going to be a magnet for the island's creatures until we get them fixed. Okay. I'll help you repair them. Sounds good. If we work together, we can get them fixed faster. Okay. So we need to repair that guy's a new guy too, right? Well, look at that. We got two new people already. Okay, where's the broken fogger condenser condensers? Whoops. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, what's what's going on here? Hey. Okay. We've repaired two of three. One left. Is it behind you? No, or maybe it's over there. I didn't repair two. I only repaired one. Oh, he, that other guy might have repaired one. Maybe. Okay. So am I going to get ambushed while I'm in this? Uh... Yep. Okay. I've repaired all the fog condensers now. Here comes another. Here we go. An irradiated Yao Guai, huh? There we go. Still running away. Uh oh. Oh, what's that? All the monsters, all the time. I bet you some of these guys got stuck on this side of the fence when you repaired the fog condenser. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was a pretty good idea to uh, uh, build the fence where I did, as it turns out. So this gun is still uh, pretty powerful, I think. Yep. I mean, I was shooting Yao Guais and other more exotic creatures dead with this thing, so I guess it... Probably works pretty well. It's definitely a good find. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have Fire Lance ammunition forever either. That's true. But you do still have a fair amount right now, at least. Yep. But I guess there'll be no shortage of other weapons you know for me to... Oh yeah, I gave that... Remember that Gauss rifle I found? I gave it to this guy. <laughs> well, you know what? He's not going to go down easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I've got to talk to somebody here. Who do I have to talk to? Uh, Dickhead. This guy. That could have been a lot worse. Thanks for the help. The creature shouldn't bother us much now that the fog condensers are working again. Yay. Okay, well, this seems like a good place to stop for this episode. Alrighty. So I guess uh, we'll do a little bit of tinkering off off camera now, and uh, then when we come back, we'll uh, I guess go back to Arcadia because we'll have uh, some stuff to turn in. Well, we'll have that. Uh, we'll have to go talk to Chase about that. And you never know the way things go here. Maybe they'll have another job for us too. Quite possibly. Anyway, until next time. I'm Rec B5. And I am Sandman99. Have a good one.